yeah, a decade on YouTube is weird. <laughs> Hello, I'm coming at you today from my cozy corner and I'm giving Kona my cozy chair. Can't guarantee she'll be there for the whole time. I think she gets irritated when I talk. So the end of December marks me being on YouTube or this channel for 10 years. It kind of feels like 10 years and it kind of doesn't. I don't know, I have mixed feelings. Most of you said I should react to my old videos, so that's what I'm going to do. I've never done one of these react kind of thing because I get kind of tired of looking at myself because I have to edit myself all the time. Also, if you are totally new here, hi, I'm Jennifer. I run a channel called Sea Lemon and for the most part of my time here I've been making book binding videos but I have had some phases of exploring different arts and crafts. So I'm going to find the top videos of the past 10 years. My laptop right in here. I know there's some cringe coming but I am kind of looking forward to reminiscing a little since I've been doing this for a while. I've seen some comments that have said their age when they started watching my videos and the age that they are now and it it makes me feel a little old but it's also kind of cool because it's like my craft was part of their childhood. I'm sorry, but can we take, can we look at how cute Kona's face is right now? 2011 was when I started my channel and it took me over two months to actually upload something. I figured why not make some tutorials on YouTube about the stuff I already knew how to do. And bookbinding was at the time my hobby. The tools you'll need are a cutting mat, a ruler, a utility knife, when I made this, I was living alone in my first apartment and I did this on my really small dining table. The music is loud on this one. I didn't really figure out how to edit audio well until years later. Now that I've edited over 400 videos, you develop an eye for uh, timing and editing. First, you wanna start by removing all sheets from the pad. I also remember hearing my voice recorded for the first time. I hated the sound of my voice, but eventually I got over it. I remember seeing Threadbanger, Michelle Phan, and So Craftastic, and I was like, okay, well, if they can do this, why can't I? I definitely did not want to show my face um, when I put this first video up, I was working as a full-time graphic designer. The thought of one of my coworkers seeing my videos just like freaked me out and I was just like so paranoid. And right now it just seems like silly to say that because I really don't care. <laughs> I definitely don't care anymore. Besides the quality of this, I don't have a problem with this video even looking back now 10 years later. And it still remains to be one of my most viewed videos and also one of my most profitable videos, still. My first slime video. I'm so over um, the slime because it had its time. I think I got in at the right time. There wasn't a lot of slime videos on YouTube in 2012. I remember I just wanted to kind of branch out and not just do bookbinding, and I still struggle with that. I go back and forth. And here's the messy part. Knead the mixture a little so it starts to clump together. At this point, I was still working at the same graphic design job, but I did move in with my boyfriend, so I was in a different location. This video really got me a lot of subscribers and really, like, got my channel up in view counts and stuff. Don't regret making slime, don't regret this kind of video. But yeah, I will not be doing any more slime stuff on my channel, sorry. You can probably guess because I had success with slime in the previous year, I'm definitely going to do that again to mimic the success it brought my channel. So of course I'm going to do another. And that is now the most viewed video on my channel. The thing that I don't want to do anymore is still the number one thing on my channel. <laughs> then watch your slime glow in the dark. I think at this point in 2013, I did show my face on um, maybe a couple videos. Since I was doing this regularly, I did explain to my family what I was doing. They still didn't understand it. They probably still don't now. My boyfriend, now husband, <laughs> he was like the only one that really understood what I was doing. I felt like if you didn't know what YouTube was and you weren't in the realm of it, you wouldn't understand. 
Coming in at over a million views, uh, Harry Potter DIY Tom Riddle's Diary, featuring a collab with Lauren Fairweather. For my part, I'm going to show you how to make a book inspired by Tom Riddle's Diary. So if I compare this video to the last one we just watched, wow, like the quality improvement, the audio improvement, figured out my voiceover, figured out the tone of my videos. This outlet that I created became more fulfilling than the full-time job I was doing. This year was my departure from being full-time graphic designer career of seven years to now being a YouTuber, which I could barely explain to my family or anybody who asked because nobody understood what it was. I remember my last freelance graphic design job, they wanted me to continue full-time and work in the office. And I was like, no, I'm gonna do this YouTube thing. I don't think the boss fully got it. At this time, MCNs were like, there were a lot of them and I remember researching them and trying to figure out which one to partner with, contracts and <laughs> like a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. This was a special time to be on YouTube. So much change happened in this time. So just recently, because of 2020, this video from 2015 has now become my most popular video from that year because of the pandemic. When I made this, I couldn't have predicted that so many people staying home during the lockdown with their kids would need to learn how to make Play-Doh. You don't need a lot of things. I really did play with this stuff as a kid. 2015, behind the scenes, I was still growing as a channel, still growing uh, my skills and still working with the same network. This year was the time that I started working with HGTV, which it was a big deal for me, but it was a lot of work behind the scenes. I had to make twice the amount of videos. It was a lot of fun to have all these opportunities, but yeah, it was a lot of work. This was also the year that I got Kona and she was kind of like my bonus to myself. I remember saying, if I can get through all of this work this year, I'm getting a dog. I've been wanting a dog. Ironically, she was hard work after I got her. So I kind of like traded hard work for some more hard work, but she's worth it. The most viewed video from 2016 is the kettle stitch binding tutorial. It's funny how like every year switches back and forth between like a craft and a book binding. I have since kind of updated some of the stuff in it because now that I am more knowledgeable in some book binding things and I have been told by professional book binders that this is not a kettle stitch and I realize that now. Um, so I put this is my own non-traditional version. Um, if you don't know, I am not a professional bookbinder and I'm more self-taught. I learned some of how to do it in college and now that I know more, I realize that my professor didn't even know like the traditional ways of doing stuff. I like bookbinding as a hobby. If it's not like perfectly traditional, I'm fine with that. As long as I had fun making it and it still functions as the thing I want it to be. That's all that matters to me. I still make text blocks this way, although I don't really make case-bound books that much because I find them more stressful. <laughs> I like book binding that is like relaxing and easy. And don't forget that you can apply this to any of my case-bound projects. I did go through a phase of being a little bit more uh, stiff on camera. When I started doing more brand deals and I was part of a network, I turned into more of like a host because I have to be like more professional because I feel like more professional people are watching me. Things to do when bored in the summer. And yep, I went back to the slime, did the slime again. <laughs> This was also a collab with Mako. I was just trying to fit in with the times. I mean, they're not that much different. I just have way more color, way more uh, saturation and things. The top DIY channels were super saturated. Just go back and watch them. You'll see what I mean. I felt like I had to kind of be on that level to get more traffic to my channel. And I tried to fit my style in that style. Maybe sometimes it worked, maybe sometimes it didn't. I think this video still continues to get watched because it is 
still stuff you want to do as a kid. This is stuff that I wanted to do as a kid. 2017 was also Adpocalypse, which was not fun to go through when YouTube is your main job. The DIY dollar store bullet journals. Again, going from crafts to book projects. They, they switch up every year. This might be the first thing I've tried with a dollar store topic. I'll be honest, I don't actually use any of these journals, uh, but they were more like ideas, sharing ideas with anybody that was interested in turning their journals into something better. This is when I started my Patreon and I am so glad that I did. <laughs> because of the way things are, for me at least on YouTube, I do not get as many views as I used to and that has definitely like messed with my mind. I know I'm not the only YouTuber to go through this. I have tried really hard to not let views affect me and it is also even more difficult if they affect my income. So as long as I have this group of patrons cheering me on, I'm okay with the art that I'm doing and that's like really a good feeling. This year I moved into my new studio which I am in now. I started on my dining room table to getting a small room where I couldn't even like walk around my tripods <laughs> and now into what I am now. Top video of 2019 was Pen Addict Goes to Muji. I think this one got more views because of the thumbnail or there's just a lot of other pen addicts out there. Japanese stationery is like on another level. This video makes me want to explore more of like Japanese stationery. I would love to go to Japan someday. Also, I've seen there's a Muji hotel, which seems really cool. I really wish there was a Muji near me. I still use just about everything in this video. There's not much to react to, I feel like, because my style's like the same. Maybe in another 10 years, <laughs> I'll, I'll be reacting to something. Oh my God, like, could I still be on YouTube when I'm like 47? 2019, I hit a milestone of uh, 1 million subscribers on my channel. That's a milestone after being on YouTube for so long, but also I feel like it's an inflated number that isn't like realistic to the actual viewership of my channel. Regardless, it's still cool. 2019, I went like the longest time without uploading any videos because I was going through a personal thing with my dad. I definitely learned to not put all my eggs in the YouTube basket <laughs> this year. The most viewed video of 2020 is recreating BuzzFeed Nifty's hardcover book binding. All because I found a comment that was like, see Limit fans having a heart attack. And so I had to look at this video and also react to it. Turns out you guys wanted to see me react to it. Looking back now, maybe I was a little too harsh on the criticism of the, <laughs> of the book that they made. I'm sure whoever made that video had other stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about and they had to rush through it. So I know how that goes. 2020 was obviously a weird year for everyone <laughs> and it's still, because I had such a rough year 2019, 2020, I was like recovering from that. And then on top of that, there's a pandemic again this year next year i also didn't post as much so that also took a toll on my channel but i definitely don't feel as guilty taking time off as i used to 2021 the top video is trying to make paper for the first time and struggling i did a lot of research before i made this video and it was a lot of work <laughs> to film this recording anything makes the whole process take way longer. Doing this and recording and adjusting the lighting and all that stuff just made this like take so much longer and it made it a little bit more frustrating. I don't know why this got so many more views than my other videos. Maybe the YouTube algorithm did something with it. I don't know. I did learn a lot from this whole process and I remember when I was done doing this video, I said to myself, I'm never doing paper making again. Um, but now I kind of want to try it again. I definitely never expected to be here for this long. I mean, I didn't even expect this to become a job and it's definitely the weirdest job I've ever had, but also like the most fulfilling. It's also the longest job I've ever had. When I was a graphic designer, I didn't work anywhere for more than like 
two and a half years. I kept jumping to different places. If you have been here from the start, thank you for sticking around. And I don't blame you if you don't want to be because uh, people grow up and tastes change. So the past few years have felt like I look at uh, how I'm doing at the end of the year and somehow I made it work. And <laughs> so I, I say to myself, okay, well, I guess I can do this another year. So let's try it out. And that's where I'm at again. So I will continue doing this as for as long as I can. Uh, cheers to another year of doing this. Um, if you have any suggestions on stuff you want to see more of on this channel, in 2022, leave it in a comment below. If you have the means to support this channel, consider becoming a patron or a member. I'll put those links in the description below. A big thanks to my studio support patrons, and I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, bye.